Hello everybody, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Krauss Neurosurgeon. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's very close to my heart. It's an area which I've unfortunately had a significant opportunity to treat over the many years of practice as a neurosurgeon. And that topic is diving and spinal cord injuries and paralysis. And I want to discuss a bit why it happens, how it happens, and how we can try to prevent this very unfortunate uh, from occurring. Unfortunately, during my career as a neurosurgeon, it's been all too common for me to, on a very warm Friday or Saturday evening or on a July 4th holiday, be called into the emergency room in the early or mid evening because somebody had dove into a swimming pool and didn't recognize that the water was too shallow and suffered a severe spinal cord injury, often resulting in paralysis. What a tragedy, and uh, over the course of years, really my heart goes out to the uh, very unfortunate victims who have suffered this and their family members. I would like you to consider the following staggering statistics. Recreational swimming and diving rank third among all physical activities after walking and camping, and is the most common activity among children. The pool or other body of water too often turns into trauma that ends up in the emergency room. Each year, more than 7,000 young Americans experience a diving accident. Consider the following. The head and neck are the most common body area injured in the diving accident and account for more than half of all sports-related spinal cord injuries. The injuries are almost exclusively located in the cervical vertebra. To understand why the neck is so frequently in, involved in injury, we can see here that the uh, cervical spine consists of seven vertebral bodies which extend way above the thoracic spine. The thoracic spine is well protected by the rib cage from trauma, but the cervical spine is very easily and readily exposed to any translation or, or axial forces. A large number of water-related uh, spinal cord injuries can be catastrophic. The loss of sensation and movement in the upper and lower body, which we know as quadriplegia, or the loss of sensation and movement from the waist down, which we know as paraplegia, happens far too often. These injuries require a lifetime of care and medical treatment. Here we can see the fractured vertebral body, which is pushed back slightly into the area of the spinal cord, and there is bruising and swelling to the spinal cord resulting in paralysis. In this MRI of the cervical spine, the spinal cord is in the center of the spinal canal. The spinal cord is seen here in gray. The white is the uh, spinal fluid around it. And we can see here, there's some uh, injury to the vertebral body at this level. And there's some retropulsion of some bone and ligament pushing into the spinal canal, into the spinal cord, and causing uh, injury and changes to the structure of the spinal cord itself. 90% of diving related accidents occur in water that is less than six feet deep. Even when the water is deep enough to prevent divers from hitting the bottom, the surface tension of the water can cause spinal injury if the diver hits the water improperly. In this regard, recreational and competitive divers alike are at risk. 90% of diving accidents occur in private residential swimming pools, 66% in below ground pools, and 33% in above ground pools. 70% of the injuries are the result of head first dives, 18% from jumps or cannonballs, and 12% from flips or handstands. Even an experienced diver can be seriously injured by diving improperly diving into water less than six feet deep, falling off a diving board, or sliding a water slide head first. Let's consider for a moment a diving board, platform diving, or edge of water diving. Each year, nearly 700 serious spinal cord injuries occur as a result of diving off of board or a platform. Collision with the diving board or platform is the leading cause of these injuries. The odds of injury caused by contact with the diving board increases dramatically if a child or adolescent is attempting a flip, handstand, or backward dive. Injuries such as broken bones, whiplash, spinal injury, and lacerations can result from diving from the water's edge into a pool or other body of water. 
So how do we prevent diving accidents? The following measures can be taken to prevent diving accidents. Always dive into a pool with your hands in front of you. So if anything hits the bottom of the pool, it's your hands and your arms, not your head. Always check the depth of the water and for any obstacles before diving. Diving should not be done in water is less than six feet deep. If depth, enter slowly, feet first. In fact, there is a program, a national program, that had been started a number of years ago known as a feet first, first time. That's always the safest. Never dive into murky water. Remember that in non-pool waters there may be submerged obstacles such as sandbanks, rocks, tree branches, and other uh, particles that are not visible from above the surface. For adolescents, young adults, and old, older adults, don't drink and dive. Prevention strategies also include educating young children about water safety to prevent them from jumping into shallow or turbid water, requiring that adult supervision or a certified lifeguard is present, employing visible depth indicators around the pool, learning proper diving technique when attempting new and unusual dives, and installing soft pool bottoms. Finally, remember that diving injuries to the cervical spine aren't always visible or immediate. Neurological effects such as nausea might occur after the diver is out of the water and the correlation to the incident might not be obvious. Other evidence of nerve damage may be observed immediately or after delay. These include tingling in the extremities, vision problems, concussion, and all diving related neck injuries should be evaluated by a head and neck specialist as delayed treatment can cause further complications. If you would like to have a question answered by Dr. Kraus, just complete the form at www.spinehealth.com forward slash contact hyphen us dot php. In the contact form, you'll notice a box requesting insurance. In this box, just simply type Ask Dr. Krauss. Thank you very much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you soon next time.